In this video, we are forecasting a widespread and multi-day severe weather outbreak across a huge chunk of the US. The Storm Prediction Center has issued elevated severe weather outlooks for today, tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On top of that, we have a potential blizzard and a massive wildfire outbreak happening all at the same time. We're gonna dig deep into the forecast data so you can be prepared. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. We have a lot to talk about today, so I'm not gonna waste too much time here. You're probably starting to hear about this on the national news, as this does look like it's going to be a massive severe weather outbreak, okay? So let's really fine-tune all of our information and really dive in there and see what's going to happen on the weather models. All right, starting off here looking at the lower 48 on the HRRR model. This is the future radar. So if you want to keep up with the time and date, it's always going to be above my head. And let's put this bad boy on the road. Let's go all the way into this evening, 8 o'clock tonight. It's mostly quiet across the U.S., but that ain't going to last for long because we got a couple things happening out there that are going to screw everything up. First of all, you can see the spin of this low pressure system up here that's trying to bring some snow up into Minnesota. And then you can see our big storm system moving into the Pacific Northwest over here in the form of rain on the coast of Oregon and a bunch of snow all the way throughout into Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. Meanwhile, moisture is going to be pouring into the middle of the country and you can see a little bit of that try to convect as severe thunderstorms tonight into early tomorrow morning. So we're talking about midnight to like 2 a.m. And that's why we actually have that slight risk of severe weather today. It's not until tonight that the problems are going to be starting. But right now we're just looking at the big picture. Notice this big swirly boy right here going to keep going off to the north and east bringing snow up into Canada. And on the tail end, that's where we're going to see some of our first areas of severe weather because of all that moisture coming up and hitting that boundary. But some of that moisture is going to sneak around up into the middle of the country and wait for this next big giant system to come through. And that's what's going to spark our uh, next big storm. Okay, so we got a couple areas of severe weather to watch out over here today and tomorrow. Uh, and then we have to watch this giant storm and see what it's going to do as that's going to be the main event. And that's going to be happening on Tuesday and Wednesday. But first, let's talk about tomorrow because things might get interesting down there in Arkansas. All right, here's a look at tomorrow's SPC outlook. We're looking at a big slight risk of severe weather from Dallas all the way up into the boot hill of Missouri and even a tiny part of Illinois and Kentucky up here as we do expect some uh, storms to form along the tail end of that uh, boundary that we were watching just a moment ago. I think that the most significant storms will probably happen right in here in Arkansas. So let's take a look at that progression on the composite reflectivity. Okay, so once again, we've got some storms popping up in Missouri tonight. Most of those will just be some heavy rain and maybe some strong winds. But watch, as we go all the way into Monday, the tail end of that boundary is going to continue to scrape the warm air and moisture advection, and it's going to spark off potentially some big storms down here in Arkansas. Look at this, the latest HRRR shows discrete supercells popping up around 7 p.m. and then going all the way through the overnight hours. So if you're in Little Rock all the way up to Jonesboro, potentially even Memphis, uh, this could be a uh, pretty significant severe weather situation for you uh, with big hail possible, some isolated tornadoes, and of course some of those downbursts with the damaging winds. Now, I, I, I gotta be 100% clear here. This is not exactly what the radar is going to look like. We're looking at a model here, okay? This is kind of like a, you know, a maybe. It's a simulation. It's AI. The Storm Prediction Center, actual smart humans have extended that slight risk of severe weather all the way down into uh, Dallas, okay? So just because this isn't showing anything for you guys doesn't mean that's the way it's going to play out. However, this is one scenario, and I do think that no matter what, this portion of Arkansas right here is going to have to be uh, dealing with severe weather on Monday night into early Tuesday morning. So make sure you're prepared for that, okay? Once again, big hail, isolated tornadoes. Make sure you have some way of getting weather warnings if you plan on going to sleep before 10 p.m. Uh, and of course, if it's needed, I will be live right here on the channel with storm chasers on the ground. So what's causing these storms to happen is, once again, we got a lot of moisture and heat coming up from the south and from the gulf, uh, but we also have a lot of instability out here. We have a lot of cape convective available potential energy. That's what we're looking at here on this map. Uh, the more yellow or red that it gets, the more intense that it gets. And you can see that what's happening here is a lot of that energy is trying its best to go north, uh, but it's getting stuck along that boundary. And that's actually going to be one of the initiation modes that starts our storms over here. So uh, right there you go. That's going to be the fuel behind these storms tomorrow night. Uh, but watch what happens as we go later into the night, into the early morning hours. Watch. This is going to try to sneak around 
Crayon and go even further north. Look, by 8 a.m. on Tuesday, it's all the way up into Kansas. I think by 2 or 3 p.m., it'll be all the way up into Iowa. And now we have this huge powder keg of potential energy for storms to form here, and that's going to bring us to Tuesday's severe weather risk. All right, there it is, guys, the latest from the Storm Prediction Center for that day three outlook. A massive enhanced risk of severe weather from Iowa all the way down into Texas. This is one of the biggest day three enhanced risks of severe weather I've ever seen. So more than likely, something significant is going to happen on this day. And let me explain why, okay? We're looking at the Euro model here, way up in the atmosphere, the 500 millibar winds. First of all, we got a tiny little baby trough here allowing for some lift to occur. Uh, that is helping our storms today and tomorrow. And this is also going to bring that little bit of snow up here into uh, Minnesota, possibly later tonight into tomorrow as well. Uh, but that's actually going to amplify and eject off to the north and east. Early Tuesday morning, you can see why that cape and why those moisture values are going to be flying up into the central portion of the U.S. because this next trough is digging down, bringing that cold air with it, and then lofting all of the moisture and heat into uh, the warm sector. And I'm telling you guys where those things meet, some bad stuff might happen. Let's go all the way into about 8 p.m. on Tuesday. You can see exactly what I'm talking about still. We've got our wall forming. We have our moisture. We're imagining those as tomatoes. We're throwing those against the wall. And wherever they splatter, wherever they hit the wall, that splattering action, the mater juice, gets turned into nader juice <laughs> or tornado juice. And we could potentially see storms and tornadoes in that area. And one of the places I'm most concerned about is a little bit further north there. As you look at places like Iowa, northern Missouri, portions of Nebraska, around the surface low, you can see that those lower level jet winds uh, around the 850 millibar level are actually really high. We're talking about 50 to 60 knots. Uh, this is really the main ingredient for nadir juice, if you ask me. And watch how it actually intensifies as we go into the overnight hours. Here we are, 2 a.m. on Wednesday. I think we have a significant nocturnal tornado risk up here in the northernmost extension of this severe weather risk on Tuesday into Wednesday, okay? Naders in the dark are absolutely the worst kind of naders, okay? Our storm chasers can't see them. We can't see them. You can't see them and they are just as dangerous or actually more dangerous and deadly than daytime tornadoes because sometimes people just don't know they're coming, man. And once again, speaking of that energy and moisture sneaking up, look how far north it gets, okay? And anywhere, anywhere along this dry line, storms are going to be able to form, guys. It's going to be one of those days we haven't seen in a while, possibly three or four years since we've seen anything like this, where we have tornado watch boxes uh, going almost all the way up and down the entire central portion of the U.S., and that's going to add back to east overnight. Watch all of that rich moisture. Uh, the oranges and the yellows there represent 60 to 70 degree dew points. And then that low pressure system is really going to take control and start forcing everything east, and that's when we we get into talking about Wednesday into Thursday uh, with our next severe weather risk. All right, there it is from the Storm Prediction Center. Another massive day four, 30% risk there from Louisiana all the way up into Illinois. Guys, That once again, this is another humongous severe weather outbreak potential. If you're in the orange or the yellow, please start preparing now. As on Tuesday, these storms will form, okay, and probably cause a lot of problems, especially in the most northern part of the, uh, the warm sector there, at least in my opinion. But those are going to skedaddle off to the east and uh, kind of die off. And then this is when Wednesday comes into play. Remember looking at the dew points, the big dry line there. This is going to be the beginning of a huge severe weather outbreak. Once again, from more northern areas all the way down into Arkansas, and Louisiana, and Texas. And this is where we're expecting some of the stronger storms uh, by 2 p.m. Okay. Now here's the thing. This is going to be uh, probably the most widespread severe weather day because this is going to turn into a big squall line or a big multicellular event that travels all the way into the Midwest and into the Ohio Valley. Okay. So I think we're going to have problems early in the morning on Thursday with storms in Alabama, up through Tennessee, Kentucky, and Ohio. Now, don't get me wrong. These aren't going to be the big tornado producers, or I, at least I don't think so right now, but certainly a classic mid 2000s uh, line of storms that travels across the uh, uh, this part of the country. You guys remember them. This is kind of what we're dealing with here into the early morning hours on Thursday. And then it looks like maybe even uh, on Thursday, you know, during the heating of the day, we're going to see a little bit of a respark of some severe weather over here on the East Coast. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. But let's take a look at that Nader juice and let me explain to you once again why I think this is going to be one of the more widespread severe weather days. Uh, 2 or 3 p.m. We're going to see a big area, lower level 850 millibar winds and an excess 
of 40, 50, 60 knots. Uh, this is tornado juice, or as I like to call it, nader juice. And I think we're going to see tornadoes all up and down this area. But I think, once again, I, I this is just my personal feelings here. Storm Prediction Center doesn't necessarily agree on this day, but I think that the northernmost extent of the uh, enhanced risk there is that the biggest disadvantage when it comes to seeing potential tornadoes. And, and, and like, I think that it's very possible that we see another instance of nocturnal tornadoes late Wednesday into early Thursday over here in the Midwest towards the Ohio Valley. Look at that, guys. Potentially 70 knots of lower level jet in Indiana and portions of Illinois, okay? And let me overlay that with the instantaneous flash rate. Guys, we're gonna have storms right there. Now, the argument's gonna be made that, well, that's gonna be a linear mode, right? And that's going to be a line of storms. Guys, we've learned that that doesn't matter. OK, um, you know, of course, yeah, maybe that's not going to be lead to a photogenic tornado. Uh, but I do think that rain wrapped, potentially embedded into a squall line and potentially even, you know, supercells breaking out in front of the squall line. I think that's all going to be possible all up and down this line on Wednesday. Uh, and I just want to make sure that I'm heard when I say that, because I think that this is going to be uh, one of the more widespread days. I don't know if it's going to be as intense as Tuesday, but certainly more people are going to feel the impact of severe weather on Wednesday. So start preparing now for all hazards. This is not the end of the world by any means. Most of everybody's gonna be fine, but every once in a while you'll have a town get hit by a tornado. And because, you know, for some reason people just don't take this stuff seriously, there's always people on the news saying like, well, there's no warning. We'd never known in a million years it was coming. Those people have no excuse, especially if we work as a team and get this word out together. And while you're at it, why don't you tell them to go ahead and download the best radar app in the entire app store. There's nothing that even comes close. In my opinion, this is a life-saving tool to have in your arsenal if you're preparing for severe weather. That's a radar app, and they are today's sponsor. Once again, Radar Omega. Radar Omega, more than just a radar app. I've been using Radar Omega on my phone since way before they sponsored the channel and let me tell you why. It's fast, smooth, and it always just works. It's the most customizable radar app that exists and there's nothing even close. You can not only view radar but also satellite and model data as well and you can view those in 3D. Also, a network of live cameras across the U.S. allow you to see what's really happening on the ground as that storm approaches your neighborhood. Check out the links in the description to figure out why tons of Ryan Hall y'all subscribers are now using Radar Omega as their number one trusted source of weather information on their phone. Now, let's get back into the video. All right, quick update on the fire and blizzard situation before we end the video. I started yesterday's video talking about the incredible fire risks down here in Texas, uh, New Mexico, all the way up into Oklahoma, Kansas, and Colorado. That is still on the table. Here are the latest outlooks from the Storm Prediction Center. You got critical risk today and tomorrow, and then elevated risks all the way through Wednesday. And once again, I think Wednesday is gonna be the biggest uh, threat there for for uh, significant wildfires, prepare now. Whatever you gotta do to protect yourself in a situation like that, do it because it's gonna be prolific. It's gonna be something like you haven't seen in a while, especially on Wednesday. Once again, uh, potentially negative 20 degree dew points, big time winds, uh, relative humidity values very low. It's going to be, there's going to be wildfires, okay? And yeah, I, I, I gotta remind you guys, don't do barbecues, don't throw your cigarette butts out the windows, you know, all that stuff, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. A fire is probably gonna start and it will spread in these conditions, okay? So just prepare now. Additionally, up here in the northern U.S., okay, you guys are going to get in on a big snowstorm here. Uh, on the southern side, we're talking about severe weather and tornadoes, and on the northern side, we are talking about a potential blizzard, uh, and it's going to start off as heavy snow from Montana all the way down into western portions of Nebraska, and then watch that low pressure system, man. It kind of just stalls out right here over Wisconsin uh, and really starts to deepen. We're already at a 980 millibar low there uh, around 2 a.m. on Thursday, and at this point, we're experiencing blizzard blizzard conditions up here from portions of uh, Manitoba and Ontario all the way down into North Dakota and Minnesota. The further north you go, the more snow you're going to get. But watch how long this thing meanders and just lingers there. That is going to drop an absolute ton of snow uh, by Saturday, April 16th. You guys are going to be measuring that. Uh, you're going to need a yallometer. Here is the potential snowfall up here, guys. We're talking about well over two feet, well over two feet of snow up there in northern uh, Minnesota. Just a wide 
widespread foot or more is going to be possible up there. This is just one model run here, so I don't want to hype it up too much and, and, and you know, go into the exact details of how much each town's going to get. But as of right now, it looks like you're going to get a bunch of snow. Prepare for that up there in the northern U.S. And also, of course, over here in the Sierras and the Cascades and everywhere in between, y'all are going to get it too. A huge shout out to our members over here. Thanks for uh, supporting the channel. A lot of you guys went and bought stuff from shopryanhall.com yesterday. In fact, we got hundreds of orders and I'm so happy that you guys are supporting. Uh, and everybody else that's not a member, remember the store goes live April 12th at noon. So please sign up on the website right now. You'll get an email when we go live and get ready because things will sell out. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Oops.